my first hour class, and they're gonna like spin the wheel, and then they're like, they're all like eagerly watching, they just get notes. Boom, Bradley got it. Now if the class decided, okay, we're not gonna let you win more than once, we wanna like spread the love around a little bit. They're like, all right, Bradley, good job, you're out of here. Boom, see ya. And it's like on to the next thing. And then that's it, so they got paid for notes as well. And again, like money's going out. Which is like an every everyday thing. And again, I had one time I had a girl who slept through the notes. And I was like, oh. so I yeah, but she got a, a fine. We do have a fine board. As like my, my classroom is all like like half of it is all painted chalkboard. So I like go over there and we have like a fine board, which is also a cool way, like where class draft was going, we're gonna take health away. Well, I'm throwing out money. I'm trying to push it out, especially early in the year. And then like when you're in trouble, it's not as much as like that elementary like you know, kid being afraid of their name being on the board. It's like, okay, like laying your names on the board. I know you got a dollar. If you don't like it being on the board, pay it off. And so sometimes some of the kids, some of the good kids like seeing their name up there. They're like, I'm gonna let it ride. I'm gonna see. So, uh, but if they, but if you don't like, some of them are like, don't even write it. They're just like holding the dollar. Like they, he knows he's in trouble. He's like, ah, just take it. Just take it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's a pretty cool thing. I don't know. Wheel of names for notes. Oh, and the best one, I did this with class drive as well. The best one as a math teacher, and I told him from the, the beginning, you get paid a dollar every time you correct me and I'm wrong. If I'm doing a math problem, and you let me just go up there and look like an ass for 10 minutes and get the whole class confused, it w I would appreciate it enough if you're like, Mr. Jones, are you sure that's not supposed to be negative five? If you would just do that, thank you, here's a dollar. So they're like, that's the coolest way, they love to correct the teacher. They go above and beyond. Some of you came in early, I said, I'm sorry, it's on my packet. I made mistakes grammatically. I'm a math teacher. I tell them all, that all the time too. If I misspelled something or whatever, I'll still pay them for it. They'll be like, dude, you totally misspelled that. I'm like, oh, thank you. Or like, and I, I print my notes up ahead of time. Like, you made an error on the notes. I'm like, I did. Whoever like calls it first, they get the money. So like correcting the teacher. And again, it's like, it's taking away that, that fear. When you say you pay them for notes, like you spin the wheel, they bring up notes to show you? No, okay, so typically, so we just finished notes. So I just did notes, we finished. I try to like limit like the time that I spend on notes, like that break it up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I'm not teaching for 40 minutes. I kind of like try to have that like 20 minute max. And then I'm going like, hey, if everybody participated, like sometimes in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm going to get everybody to participate. Like I'm gonna feed you questions. Like, you know, some of them like, hey, I've heard enough from these two and I'll, I'll get an answer out of everybody. But um, yeah, typically like, I'll just like go, okay, if I got participation out of you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spin it. And sometimes I don't I don't like force feed all those answers. And then I did also though, I told them I reserve the right though, as a teacher, I reserve the right to check your notebook at any single time. And if you, if I got up here and talked for freaking 20 minutes, you didn't write one of the examples down, and I walked over there and I was like, hey, let me see that. And they, you, there's a blank on example three that I know I just did. Yeah, you're gonna feel on the fine board, right? I'm like, oh man, you did the thing, and I'm putting it up there making it to where it's not like the biggest punishment in the world. They're not afraid of it. I'm just like, come on, man, don't do that. So yeah, I, I will check their notebooks and I'll find them. But like if they're participating, they could still win a dollar and then I go over there and be like, dude, you didn't do the dang example. And then you like basically lose a, lose a dollar. So it kind of goes like, it goes back and forth a little bit. Uh, but then the, the spending currency. So like I said, the, the original thought was make money from tests, spend it on Snickers, make money on tests, spend it on Snickers. But there, there's a lot more to the like the store. Okay, so like the what gives the money its value, I think at first it's the store. It's like having a, a class store where they can go like buy pop and they can go buy candy bars, they can go buy chips. Like that's at first. Like the US dollar, like at first, it was worth something because there was like gold in some vault somewhere. But it's not like that anymore, right? And like the evolution of how this works in the classroom, it was kind of like it was worth that early on. Like we talked about the kid playing blackjack. We talked about the principal's daughter get like having so much fun like with the money and like beating the boys and like winning their money that it just like the money just became like value in and of itself. And just like having the money, like there was one girl who just had, she got hundreds of dollars. She literally could have bought a 12 pack of pop. She didn't want to spend a dime of it because she wanted to have, she wanted to be like the big stack at the poker table. She wanted to be like, I have all this. I can play poker with you all day and lose, and it's just fine. So like having the money became more fun than actually even spending the money. So they just kind of try to keep, keep building it up. But you have to, like to manage the economy as a class, you have to have ways. Like I dished out my money, like from the teacher part of 
of it, I'm going, if they just raid my store and buy all my crap, then there's like no more value to it. So like they have to have ways that they send it back. Um, so like they, they rent their seats. Like we said, every Monday I meet them at the door. It's like, a, like we do like a seat rental and they make their own seating chart. So money comes back, fine. Like money comes back. Um, I also have like a big jar of mints. So like the store I, is only like open on test day on like the end of the week. So it's like open one day a week. Um, but then I do have like a big jar of mints and I was kind of lazy at the beginning and just did the, here are my mints. And people like, have a mint, yeah, have a mint, yeah. And I was like, you should start paying for these mints. I was like, that's what we're gonna do. You're gonna pay for the mints. So then like, it's like two mints for a dollar. So then like every day, money's like coming back because kids are addicted to like breath mint for some reason. <laughs> it's just like, I don't, I don't know. But so like, I'm like, okay, that's another way. So like money's, money's coming back in all the time. You got signs, you got mints, you got, you got 